is advanced warfare. Atlas has the single largest standing military in the world, but we answer to no country. Every fall, the winds get colder, the trees shed their leaves, and the Call of Duty can be heard across landlines and through headsets across the world. The latest chapter, Advanced Warfare, aims to recover from last year's moderately received ghosts and directly compete with new IPs like Titanfall and Destiny. The story and technology are both set 40 years in the future, but are the new gadgets enough to make this franchise feel like it's not delivering more of the same? During the six to eight hour campaign, you play as Jack Mitchell, portrayed by the omnipresent Troy Baker. But the real star of the show is Atlas president and CEO Jonathan Irons, played by Kevin Spacey. The Academy Award winning actor consumes the screen whenever he makes an appearance and has been given some delicious dialogue. Your wars don't work. It's one of the more fluid and cohesive storylines from a Call of Duty game in recent memory. Instead of juggling roles, you only play as Mitchell, so you're able to follow one continuous thread. And the pre-mission cutscenes make the narrative much more accessible. What makes less sense are some arbitrary limitations on what tech you're allowed to use and when. You bring three to four pre-assigned exosuit abilities with you on each mission, and your objectives are tied to this loadout. You may sense the perfect ability to use in a situation, only to remember the game won't let you equip it in that specific area. The new Exo powers can make traditional Call of Duty maps feel completely different, but only when you have access to them. You level up your Exo suit between missions with points gained from gathering regular kills, grenade kills, headshots, and intel hidden in each level. Exo suitability you'll use most frequently is a burst of speed in any direction, including an indispensable forward dash in midair. This combined with the boost jump and ledge grab will let you scramble over almost any obstacle in single player and multiplayer. Other favorite tools include new threat grenades that scan for targets and temporarily reveal them with bright red outlines, and a grappling hook that turns a few later levels of the campaign into a stage from Arkham Asylum. The advanced arsenal makes levels that would otherwise be standard Call of Duty fare suddenly unique and exciting, but there are still some rough moments. AI movement can appear off at times, and your teammates can be 10 feet from a target and miss every shot. These hiccups aren't enough to spoil what is one of the best Call of Duty campaigns in the series, thanks to constantly evolving environments in Exotech. The ending doesn't make much sense, but you'll have a good time getting to it. Lifelike facial performances serve as the graphical centerpiece, but at times, they're more eerie than exciting. When a character's lips don't match their speech, it can be hard to stay attached, but there are also moments that are very impressive. Overall, it's a better looking game than Call of Duty Ghosts, at least on the Xbox One. Set so far in the future, the environments house lots of fun technical touches that simulate what our world might be like then. The new EXO upgrades really make things explosive in multiplayer. There's survival four-player co-op against waves of soldiers with ever-increasing difficulty, and COD's classic multiplayer with 10 modes across 12 maps. Survival resets at wave 25 and stacks into infinity. Our first match went for two straight hours before we stopped for sustenance. You can level up your soldier or weapon, and the activities demand you stay mobile and aware. We'd be lying if we said we don't miss the stronger narrative context of Spec Ops, but survival is pleasantly hectic. And there are a ton of maps to unlock and hours to sink into it. Standard multiplayer is faster than ever. Like Titanfall and Destiny, enemies are frequently airborne or zipping out of the way with one click of the left thumbstick. Our favorite new mode is Uplink, Arena Football meets American Gladiator. You have to get a satellite and toss it or carry it through your goal. You can't fire when you're holding it, but you can toss it at an attacking target and silence them. We can imagine pro teams getting good at passing or making Hail Marys from specific points on the map. Advanced Warfare's quicker pace benefits modes like Capture the Flag and Kill Confirmed the most. Our favorite map is Terrace, a swinging nightclub straight out of Vice City, but others have fun hazards you can trigger. Riot's Prison will label targets on the opposing team, Ascend deploys turrets, and both Biolab and Recovery will open up new parts of the map over time. 
Maps in high places with perilous falls can keep things interesting, given everyone's added airtime, and each environment feels adjusted for the increased movement speed. Each time you get a new gun, you have to level it up before you unlock new scopes and other attachments. Weapons and cosmetic options drop fairly frequently, and you can dump certain items for added XP. After spending two days with the game, we still have a ways to go and plenty of options in the armory, and supply drops with weapons, gear, or reinforcements constantly provide new stuff to try out. The wildcard system can seem a bit restrictive at times, but there are plenty of ways to set your personal style and work for the goals you want to achieve. When browsing guns, you can jump into a firing range and test them out without loading, giving you plenty of time to judge what goes and what stays. Advanced Warfare is Call of Duty's true starting point for a new generation. The tech enhancements are an important evolution for the franchise, giving the online proceedings a necessary shot in the arm. The campaign is predictable but thrilling with enough exclusive tech tricks and set pieces to make it a must play. Co-op can sustain you for multiple hours, and it's hard to imagine playing Call of Duty multiplayer without an exosuit ever again. Sledgehammer is found fun in the future, and we can't wait to go back to it.